100,000 kids in care, goodness me. It's a hell of a number, isn't it? I think it's an indictment on our childcare system, on what councils are doing to prevent young people and children entering the care system in the first place. We don't do prevention. I can think of a, of a handful of figures in public life, Nick. Maybe you can, maybe our viewers can think of their own uh, heroes, in a sense, who've pulled themselves out of incredibly difficult beginnings in life. I saw him on telly today, actually. Andrew Pearce, the Daily Mail columnist, started in care. But by and large, the prospects for someone who starts in a care home are massively, massively limited. Yeah, and we need to start by saying it's not the children's fault. You know, it's not their fault, the parents they were, were given. Um, I need to also to say that social work, social work is the toughest job I've ever come across. I've never been a social worker, but I've worked alongside him. I've seen him over two decades. I can only say it's, it's the only job I've ever seen I wouldn't want to do yeah. because there, there seems to be no solution sometimes. Now, you have children who go into the um, care system for a variety of reasons, some for a short amount of time, some for a long time. Um, and their outcomes in life are absolutely terrible. There's reports out there. I've not read a report for about two, three years now, but the reports are still saying the same thing. If we leave a child with abusive parents who physically or sexually abuse that child, they do better in life if we leave them with those parents than take them into our care system. Unbelievable. That's how bad our care system is. Nick, when you were dealing with homeless people, what, was it possible to say what proportion had been in care? Um, no, it, I, I would just be pulling a number out of the air. Yeah, because, I mean, sometimes getting to the bottom of what their life stories entails, it, it's not the easiest thing in the world, is it? But we, we do know, don't we, however, that there is a shortage of people who are willing to become foster parents. It's not as if the number of kids going into care has suddenly rocketed. It is gently going up. But actually, the bigger problem, in a sense, is the fact there is a, a real serious shortage of, and you can understand why, of people who want to be effective foster parents. Yes. If you look at the increase in IVF treatment, so um, women who are infertile need help to get pregnant. If you look at the, the rate of that increasing over the last two decades, and you look at the decrease of children being adopted or fostered, the lines cross. The, the, there is a correlation between both of them. So 20, 30 years ago, if you were unfortunate enough not to be able to have your own children for whatever reasons, you would contemplate adoption, you would contemplate fostering. Now, your first choice is, let's have our own. It might cost us three, four, five, ten grand, but let's have our own, and people are doing that, which is great for them, and I'm not criticising people for that, but what we're doing is we're leaving our fellow citizens, our junior fellow citizens, mm. in homes, in care homes. And then forgetting about them, Nick. I mean, that's the other point in all this, and we think back to the succession of grooming scandals across parts of, of our country and quite often the common denominator was that the victims either were in or had been in care. I've worked with dozens of young people uh, through my charity and when I worked for the council who were in care. I did work in, in children's homes as well at some point. So I've spoken to many children who are in care and the thing that comes across most of all and the thing they want most of all is a thing they cannot have, and it's a hug off an adult. So I can't hug them. I'm not allowed to. The staff in the home looking after them, they can't hug them and give them a hug and tell them they're special. And they're brought up in a corporate environment where it's all about the money. These companies make fortunes running children's homes. And the thing those children need is to feel like a child and feel protected and be hugged and get a kiss. And I understand why we don't do that, but then we wonder why those children leave those homes and will do anything for anybody if they feel special and loved. There's a whole gap missing in their heart that a parent should have filled for them. And Nick, one final thought. We mentioned social workers. Uh, for you, it's pretty much the worst job that people could do. There's no doubting it's a vital one. Hardest but job. I, the, the, but the rates of churn, if you look at the number of people, lots of younger people think, who want to make a difference, God bless them, choose social work, maybe not in the numbers that once did, but 
the, the, the rates of disillusionment and disenchantment, the speed with which people realise that actually what they want to do and what they can do are very different things? Yes. If you're going to go into social work, you need to understand the number one aim of your job. The number one aim of your job as a social worker is to make sure when someone dies, the council can't be blamed. That's your number one aim in your whole job. So because of that, there's far too much box ticking, back slapping, covering each other's backs. You then can do some good work. And of course, social workers do good work as well. But the disillusionment is always because you have to follow procedures. And those procedures are there for a reason. But those procedures are not there, for my experience, for the benefit of the child. They're there for the benefit of the council.